right field. Frank Ford comes angling in. Over toward the line. Makes the catch. Tagging from third is Lombard Dozy. The throw to the plate. He is out! Save number 113 for Jonathan Papelbon. It's a new Phillies franchise record. And the rifle arm of Jeff Francoeur helped Papelbon's cause. And his trip to the record. 3-2 the final score. What a throw by Jeff Francoeur. It's hard to duplicate the excitement of last night's finish and the record for Jonathan Papelbon, but nearly 7,000 kids from the Delaware Valley tried to replicate it this morning. Ben Revere signing autographs. It was Weather Education Day here at Citizens Bank Park, and those kids are still hanging around for the finale of this four-game series. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Ben Davis. We got a chance to see a little franchise history last night. Jonathan Papelbon earning save number 113 in a Phillies uniform. He now is sitting atop two different historic franchises in that category. And he did it in such an uncharacteristic manner. But this is a big thrill for him. He and Rob Nenner are the only two guys to, to be the career saves leaders of two different ball clubs. It's a big honor for him. He showed his humility last night with his interview after the game with Murph. And here you see this is the one in the World, World Series back in 2007 against the Colorado Rockies. You can see his enjoyment of the moment <laughs> and uh, I mean this is this is first save with the Phillies against the Buccos. First save with the Phillies against the Pittsburgh Pirates back in 2011. He gets McCutcheon to ground one over to third. Ty Wiggins and somehow holds on to the bag and that's the final out on that day in Pittsburgh. Now the franchise record it wasn't easy last night. I mean, obviously, the leadoff batter gets aboard, so then you're in a precarious spot. Yeah, the leadoff walks are never good, but was able to advance to third on a thrown error by Papelbon. Frank Cork comes up, really bails him out, and throws a rocket to home plate. Chooch was a tremendous tag. And here, Papelbon, you see him again, ecstatic about the moment. It's a, it's a save he will never forget. Well, it's a save he'll never forget. As Ben alluded to earlier, he is now alongside Rob Nen, the only pitchers to be atop two different organizations in the saves category as Papelbon passes Jose Mesa last night. All right, well, when you have special nights like last night, there are also special plays that take place, including that Fran core play. But during the course of the ball game yesterday, the Phillies defense really stepped up behind their pitchers. They did step up. They knew Cole's on the mound and he's doing his best out there. They want to play the best behind him. See so Cesar Hernandez with a tremendous play here. Throws off his right foot. Initially called safe. That play was overturned. Dale Scott got it right. And this is a play here by Andres Blanco. Doesn't panic despite having a fast runner. Throws another rocket across the diamond. That was an incredible throw thinking that Blanco had just entered the game and then of course this is the capper of the night. I think one of the best things was the reaction and the look on both of their faces when this was all said and done. Yeah, it was you're right. I mean this is uh you got to send them there. You have to send Lombardozzi, but the way Papelbon responded and reacted to that was awesome. He ends up picking up Frank Court when they're walking <laughs> through the line, congratulate each other. Like I said, it's a save he will never forget. All right, so the Phils and the Pittsburgh Pirates will wrap up this four-game series today. It'll be Vance Worley, the former Philly, against Aaron Harang, who has gone at least six innings in every start so far in a Phillies uniform, making his eighth start against a team that he is very used to. Well, we mentioned that it was Weather Education Day. Sheena was here. Bill was here. Hurricane was here. They had the entire force out, and they also included some Phillies players. Lineups at first pitch when we return.
Taking the field as Aaron Harang will look to give the Phillies a series split in this four game set. It's pretty day here in Philadelphia. A little cooler than what we uh, had the last time we had a day game. Let's take a look at the Pirates starting lineup brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. It'll be Polanco, Harrison, and Walker, followed by Starling Marte, Pedro Alvarez, and Jung Ho Gang. And Jordy Mercer will bat seven. Chris Stewart will bat eighth and batting ninth and pitching is Vance Worley. And they will face right hander Aaron Harang. Harang three and three with an earned run average of 2.38, 45 and a third, and 31 strikeouts along the way. He's been very good. We mentioned it in all the starts this year, Ben. He's gone at least six innings in every one of those starts. No other Phillies pitcher can say that. He has been the most consistent Phillies pitcher all season. He's been great. He's been a great signing for the Phillies. He saved the bullpen. He's given them a lot of innings, and he's been really good. Well, this will be start number eight. We take a look at the scouting report on Aaron Harang. Not much has changed since the first part of the year. Average velocity 88.9. Slider, curve, change, and a cutter. And he's pitched a lot against these Buckos, being in the NL Central for so long. He's 16 and 8 with a 4.04 ERA career against those Pirates. Yeah, from 2003 to 2007, he was 11 and 3 against Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at the Nissan Keys to this afternoon's ball game. Plain and simple, advance to a split. Vance Worley on the mound today for the Pirates. And if the Phillies get out of here with a split, Vance Worley will be the guy to do it against. And play that D. Keep playing that D. Very good defensively last night. Won a ball game. So keep doing it. So they are the keys to the game. The leadoff batter is Gregory Polanco, who is 3 for 10 so far in this series. He has scored three runs for the Pirates. No Andrew McCutcheon here this afternoon for the Pirates, at least to start. First pitch of the game is in there. So we're underway. It's no balls in one strike. Polanco, 266 overall. With a home run and 11 runs batted in. Going two now to Polanco. Aaron Harang spent a good part of his career with the Cincinnati Reds, so he got a chance to face the Pirates a lot since both were in the Central Division. In fact, we mentioned his numbers from 03 to 07 when he was 11 and 3, 17 starts during that time. Uh, against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Since then, though, from 2008 through last year, he's 5-5 five and five against Pittsburgh. Outside with a change up, 1-2. and two. I would just think it would be so hard as a pitcher. You face a team that many times. Obviously, a lot of the guys are going to be the same in the same lineup. How do you not fall into patterns? I think that's why his, his first uh, 17 games were so impressive. The fact that he was 11-3. In those ball games, 2-2 pitch to Polanco. Rockets have foul. Polanco signed by the Pirates in 2009 as an amateur free agent out of the Dominican Republic. In fact, when he first was scouted by Pittsburgh and a lot of other major league teams. He was a pitcher. He was tall, spindly, all legs, a lot like he is now. Pops this one up behind home plate, not a play. He does have some long legs on 52 inch inseam, huh? Tom. <laughs> the Pirates scout that signed him, Rene Gallo. Said he looked like a sick giraffe when they signed him from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> that one's popped up foul territory, third base side. Hernandez will run out of room. He could have prepped me for that one. <laughs> sick giraffe. Well, now he looks like a healthy giraffe because he is a big kid. They made the right move by transitioning him to the outfield. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch number 10 in this at bat from Harang. And a fly ball left field. Ben Revere comes sprinting in and makes the catch. Well, I thought that ball was going to be a little deeper than that. The wind blew it straight down. <laughs> During the 2015 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents. 
for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. Well, after a 10 pitch at bat, here's Josh Harrison playing left field today. Only the second time this season he's been out in left field. And there's a ladder out toward left. Revere froze for a moment. He wasn't going to get it anyway. And Harrison has his third hit of the series. And that'll bring Neil Walker to the plate. And Murph, you got to keep an eye on Harrison and every other Pittsburgh Pirate base runner because they are aggressive on the base paths. Yeah, Polanco, are very aggressive. As you mentioned, Harrison, Marte as well. These are guys that uh, like to swipe bases. The Pirates have done it very well as a team so far. 21 of 27 so far this season. They've stolen three bases in this series. Polanco's stolen 10 already this season. So Cameron up behind the plate today. He's got his work cut out for him. And, you know, Aaron Harang as well. Got to keep these guys close and keep them from taking that extra base and getting themselves in the scoring position. Uh, Ruff's done a very good job. He's thrown out 45% of the the runners against him this year, but he's going to have to be on his game today because these guys are likely to run. Well, we have seen uh, that in this series alone. So Harrison takes his lead off first. The count is one ball, no strikes to Neil Walker. And Walker fouls it away. It's one and one. A better hitter left handed than right handed. That's why last night against the lefty Hamels, he was down in the order. And now today against the righty Harang, he is up in the order. You know, Murphy is absolutely right, though. I mean, Cameron Rupp does have his work cut out for him. Cameron does a very good job getting to his feet quickly, but he also has a very good arm. Now, I'm not saying anything against Chooch, but he doesn't have that arm strength that Cameron Rupp does have, so he does have an advantage. In fact, that he's stronger. Well, and youth has a lot to do with that. Absolutely. Point. No. Absolutely. Carlos getting today off. Great tag on that game, that play to end the game last night. That one's over toward the first base side, a foul ball. For those watching at home, you know, speaking with Aaron Harang, he's a guy that's a big believer in seeing what the hitters will give him and also what the umpire will give him. So you'll see him early on in ball games expand the strike zone. You may call it nibbling, but I think it's trying to see how far is this guy going to give me? I'm not saying he's exactly like this guy, but it's almost like the way Mark Burley throws for the Blue Jays. You see Dale Scott, the crew chief, behind the plate. CB Buckner at first, Lance Barrett at second, Toby Basner at third. Burley, because he relies on placement, he will try to extend the outer edges and inner edges of the plate a little bit. Another foul ball. Boy, a lot of foul balls here in this inning. Six foul balls against Gregory Polanco. And five against Neil Walker. They get six. So it remains one ball, two strikes. See what Walker's done in his career against Aaron Harang. Coming off a solid 2014. Curve ball popped up. Howard will give it a look over toward the dugout and out of play. All right, Mr. Catcher. Yes. All these foul balls today in this first inning. I mean, what are you thinking behind the plate? Are you trying to outthink the hitter in a way that you can sneak one by him? Is there some approach that you would take on this? Not outthink them, but Aaron Harang, for being a, a very big guy, he's got a short arm. So that tells me that these guys just aren't picking it up cleanly enough where they can barrel a pitch. And I know it's, it's, you just got to keep grinding and hope they put some play and get some double play here. Fly ball left field and Revere has room and he circles back 
Makes the catch. Harrison tags from first just to draw the throw. Two outs here at the top of the first inning. Yeah, that'll bring Starling Marte to the plate. But it is frustrating. You know, obviously he's frustrated out on the mound. You have to throw that many pitches and you get that many foul balls. I guess you get frustrated as a catcher. Hey, come on, dude, put one in play, would you? <laughs> oh, see, I thought you were going to say you get frustrated with the pitcher, but you get frustrated with no, the hitter. I would. I get frustrated with the hitter. So after a quick conversation, Rupp goes back behind the plate. Marte. Five for 12 lifetime against Aaron Harang. In the series, he has a couple hits, three RBIs on a three run home run. Fouls it back, it's 0 1. Two. Pirates could have done this ball game 17 and 17. They're six and a half games back in the Central behind the St. Louis Cardinals. Clint Hurdle's team had a chance to pick up a game last night because of uh, Corey Kluber and what he did against the Cardinals, but they wound up losing to the Phils. That one is hooked down the left field line. Revere will get to it quickly. Harrison on his way to third. He'll hold up there. And Marte's at second base with a two out double. Second and third, two men down. Fourth double of the year for Marte. Nothing new there against the Phillies. He just is a Philly killer. Breaking ball there, stays up. Just hit off the end of the bat enough where it didn't go to the wall. I think Harrison would have scored. Here's Pedro Alvarez, 208 on the year, five homers, 14 runs batted in. He has one hit lifetime against Harang. Delivers a strike, it's 0 and 1. Surprised McCutcheon's not in there today? Well, he's given each of the outfielders a day off in this series. I know, but I'm always surprised when McCutcheon or somebody like that isn't playing. Change up 0 and 2. It always surprised me, not surprised me, but made me laugh when the outfielders or first base, you know, I'm tired. I need, I need a rest. Oh, you push back at them. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, just squat for nine innings. <laughs> no balls, two strikes to Alvarez in the pitch. And he pulls that one to first, caught by Ryan Howard. Side is retired. Well, a hefty pitch load. For Aaron Harang here in the first, he throws 27 pitches, but he leaves a couple. We'll go to the bottom of the first. Phillies up for the first time.
drafted by the Phillies will return to Citizens Bank Park as a Pittsburgh Pirate. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Ben Revere leads it off in left, then Freddie Galvis and Chase Utley. Ryan Howard, the first baseman bats cleanup. Cesar Hernandez hits fifth. Grady Sizemore, sixth. Then Odubel Herrera, seventh. Cameron Rupp does the catching. He'll bat eighth and batting ninth. And pitching is, of course, Aaron Harang. And they'll face the Vanimal. He's two and two this year with an ERA of 4.63. Former third round pick in 2008 by the Phillies. Very popular pitcher while he was here in the big leagues for a short period of time. He did. He took the city by storm when he came up and lots of over 50% swing and misses when he first started coming up. We'll take a look at his scouting report 87 to 90. Cutter, slider, curve, and a change. He's 10 and 7 with a 374 ERA career at CBP. Yeah, back in 2011 when he finished third in the rookie of the year voting. He was a member of the Phillies. He was 11 and 3 with an ERA of just over 3. First pitch to Revere, the guy he was traded for, is down low. It's one ball and no strikes. Ben hitting 252, no home runs. Vance now 27 years old. Side two balls, one strike to Revere. Ben is three for 13 so far in this series with an RBI. Slaps that one back over the mound. Walker backhands and then kicks it. And the Phillies have a base runner in E4. It's the first error of the year for Walker. It didn't look like the best effort, did it, Tom? No, it, it's almost as if he knew he was going to boot it because of the way his body language was. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking at. His body language is like, oh, ho, oh, hum, uh, oh, well. Hits him in the heel and clanks it. It would have been a tough play. But definitely an error. Well, now Galvis, who is the Phillies' hottest hitter, this is his 34th game of the season. He's hitting 336. Last year he played in 43 big league games and he hit 176. And another base hit for Freddie Galvis. And Revere will stop at second. And the Phillies at first and second with nobody out. The fact that Ben had a freeze as that ball was lined past him slowed him from going from first to third. Yeah, you're not going to want to get thrown out of third base anywhere, but. He's got to make sure he doesn't get hit by the ball as well. See him kind of freeze and make sure that ball gets through. Remarkable what Freddie Galvis has been able to do this year. Came in fifth in the league in hitting with a 336 average, and now with a base hit here in the first inning, his average climbs to 342. Still a ways to go before he catches D. Gordon, but. Utley takes outside. It's one and zero. Did he catch D. Gordon at a bad time or what? Then far. Uh, yeah. In fact, I think everybody was stunned when he didn't play the final game of that series. Marlins had a chance to really put the, their foot on the neck of the Phillies. Marlins pulled foul past one Samuel. Well, Chase has seen uh, mostly fastballs. 65% of the pitches he's seen have been fastballs. You know, you've talked about, and Matt's talked about, the off balance uh, against the change of speeds. And you see he's hitting, hitting under 100 against the changeup. And that's, you know, the fastball one, that's the one that I'm alarmed about because it doesn't matter how hard you throw, you have a short swing, you'll be fine. But. You know, that's telling me maybe that swing isn't as short as it has been in the past. In the dirt, two balls, one strike.
He lifts it out towards center. Coming in is Marte. He'll make the catch. And there's one gone here in the bottom of the first. Today's Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contested is Michael Hipser of Stowe, Pennsylvania. Phillies hit a home run at today's ball game. And Michael will win $300. Good luck, Michael. I'd like to give it out here in the first inning. Then he can enjoy the 300 bucks. And the Phillies can enjoy a lead. That'd be worth it. Three run lead for a three run homer. Mm -hmm. For 300 bucks. Howard is one for 10 in the series. He's been hit by a pitch. That's one of two times that he's reached base. Runners take their lead. First pitch is in the dirt. One to know. I don't remember Worley being this far across his body at release point. I mean, he's really stepping and throwing across his body. And his landing foot lands well across his body. Now it's pulled into right field to base hit. Revere throws again, so he's going to stop at third. It's a single for Howard. The bases are loaded. I will talk about this to I'm blue in the face, but that's an out if there's nobody on base. That's an out. First and second, they can't go into that shift. That would have been right into the teeth of that shift. It's not, but you see here, right there, boom. You usually have guys out in this vicinity, and that ball would have been right there. But you have guys that are have to stay in their same positions because you have runners on base. That ends an 0 for 9 stretch for Ryan Howard, and here is Cesar Hernandez with the bases loaded. By the way, I think uh, Ryan gave a little friendly smile over to Ben Revere saying, Hey man, what are you doing over at third? But he did have to kind of freeze because of the angle. Fastball, and it's one and one. Team leader in walks. He's also now their their leading hitter with runners in scoring position, which is remarkable. Dubal had that had the lead for a while. Back looking for two, the 2 1 pitch. Late on a high 86 mile an hour fastball, and it's 2 and 2. Now, this is where in 2011 that Vance would throw that two seamer off the hip of the left handed batter. He doesn't throw it as much anymore. At least the numbers don't dictate it. Try to backdoor a cutter. Brady Sizemore is on deck. Stay up the middle right here. Don't try and do too much. And ball four that forces in a run. The team leader in walks comes through again, and the Phillies take a one nothing lead. Neil Walker's error comes back to hurt the Buckos here and Vance Worley. It's good at bat. And if he does swing at that, I'm thinking maybe pop up to the infield or swing through it. That's good. They made him pay. Pretty close pitch. Very close. And now Sizemore. Sizemore is nine for his last 24. It's raised his average to 241. He was well below 200 before it started. And he pulls that one back toward the middle of base hit. One run is in. Howard will be held at third. An RBI single by Sizemore. Two nothing Phillies. I love those RBI situations where a guy gets a fastball he can drive on the first pitch and he takes advantage of it. 
Here's Odubel Herrera will bat with the bases loaded and Murphy's uh, gone through a little bit of a funk recently and they're hoping he's getting out of it. Yeah, he has been scuffling. You know, he came out of the, the shoot uh, to start this season, and he really was terrific. The offensive numbers in his first 26 games, uh, really off the charts, and leading almost all rookies in, in all the major offensive categories. But if you take a look at his last eight games, just 5 for 28, the one home run that we saw the other night, zero walks. 15 strikeouts and Ryan Sandberg said uh, you know it's a combination of pitchers starting to adjust to him a little bit but also he's getting a little jumpy up there he's falling behind in the count and he's swinging at some bad pitches so they're hoping that he could shorten his swing a little bit and uh, and you know just try to use his speed hit the ball on the ground and kind of beat some stuff out to kind of get back into the groove so that's what they're looking for out of uh, Odubel today. Well that last swing right there is an indication of what he's been doing recently where he's just doesn't look like he's sure of himself. Swing of the miss. He's getting a lot of that too. It's the stuff that Murph was talking about that Sandberg was alluding to. The pitchers are adjusting to a duel. And we're seeing a lot of breaking balls down and in. Melanson was having his way with him the other night, throwing that cutter inside him, fouled one off his foot, does him a favor and throws him a big hook, and he knocks it out of the ballpark. But Able to lay off it there, but that's how pitchers are attacking him. Stewart blocking that pitch in the dirt. One ball, two strikes to a double error. You look around Major League Baseball, the rule five selections that teams picked up, like Odubel Herrera, even though he's struggling, his numbers still are uh, good in comparison to the other guys. Foot, he remains one and two. Aaron Morang threw 27 pitches in his half of the first. This will be the 23rd pitch here by Vance Worley. And at the bottom of the first. His defense hurt him early on in the error by Ben Revere's on Ben Revere's ball by Neil Walker. That one spun back off the mound. Walker's got it. Flips the second for one. Over the first in time. 4 6 3 double play. Side is retired. However, the Phillies strike first. They get a couple against Vance Worley. We'll go to the second inning. It's 2 0 Phillies. Hatfield Phillies Franks Dollar Dog Night. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. In fact, you could buy tickets for all three games this weekend against the Arizona Diamondbacks. We head to the top of the second. 
Jung Ho Gung will lead it off for the Pirates. He did not play in last night's ball game. First pitch from Harang is taken low. One ball, no strikes. Pirates signed Gung out of the Korean Baseball Organization. As he chops that one toward third. Nice play by Hernandez. And he's one away. An organization that was founded in 1981. And the reason they signed him is because he was coming off a 356 40 home run season over in Korea. It's turned out to be a pretty big help because of uh, some struggles by Josh Harrison and Jordy Mercer on the left side of that infield for the Pirates. And here is Jordy Mercer. One for seven of the series so far. We could probably get into this a little later on, but so I'm looking at the Korean baseball organization's numbers and I wonder, man, he's got 40 home runs and hit 356. I don't care what league you're in, that's a heck of a year. Sure is. Well, the average ERA for the pitchers in the Korean baseball organization, and it's a 128 game season. Right. Last year when he was there, was 5.22. <laughs> That's the league average. So you figure there had to be some guys that had some good offensive numbers. You're right there. That's a. That's just some numbers. Well, it's popped up foul territory. Howard will give it a try, and it's out of his reach. Sound like your numbers up at uh, North Jersey Prep. North Jersey Prep. <laughs> I was only born in North Jersey. I didn't spend any time there. All right. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. So we get a miss with a breaking ball. First strikeout for Harang, and there's two outs here in the second. Now well, it's time to take a look at our T-Mobile game changer. Uh, we mentioned that Aaron Harang has 16 wins against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And it's second only to Johnny Cueto for active pitchers. Jason Marquis, yes, he is still active with 13. Giovanni Gallardo, previously with the Brewers, with 12. It is fun to watch him throw a baseball game. He's not overextending himself out there, not putting a bunch of effort. Maybe look like he's breathing out there. I mean, he's just, you know, he picks out his spot. He knows the pitch that he wants to throw. He has conviction in that pitch, and he executes. And there's nothing special to his stuff, but he pitches. Look at him. He's not even, he's just chewing his gum. All right. Give me a sign. Let's get after it. Now he's got the one he wants and the one two pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. Stewart is struck out. Back to back strikeouts for Aaron Harang and he works a one two three second inning against the Pittsburgh Pirates. So he's up two to nothing. We'll see what they have in store for Vance Worley when we return.
Next on Broad, presented by Virtua Joint Replacement Institute. Weekday mornings from 6 until 8 over on the Comcast Network and streaming live on breakfastonbroad.com. Earlier today, Jesse Biddle was a guest on Breakfast on Broad. We head to the bottom of the second. Vance Worley gave up two runs in the first. One earned, one unearned. And it'll now face Cameron Rupp, who is 0 for his last seven. First time playing in this series. Hitting 143. I was watching the news last night. Very cool to see some of those Eagles players going over to the hospital, and visiting some of the, the passengers from the Amtrak tragedy. Very kind of them. Yeah, prior to us coming on the air today, uh, Mayor Nutter held another press conference, and apparently they have found um, the last remaining uh, victim or last remaining body has been unidentified as of yet. So everybody according to Mayor Nutter is accounted for that was in that tragedy. Uh, play down the right field line remains no balls and two strikes to Cameron Rupp. It's just nice when you see players in your community. Yeah. You know, giving of themselves. And it's great on their behalf and the organization. Foul down the left field line. And it remains one and two to Cameron. Giving Carlos Ruiz a day off here. You've been on both ends of the spectrum when it comes to uh, Carlos Ruiz, Cameron Rupp, mm -hmm. starter and backup. It's not an easy thing to do when you're a backup catcher. Backup infielders, a lot of times you'll get a start or two, a pinch hit appearance. I mean, Rupp doesn't even get a pinch hit appearance because there's only two catchers on the roster. Right. Shoots that one the other way. Caught by Alvarez, who had him play perfectly. So I would think you're battling sharpness uh, every time you go out there. Yeah, and the game, you can go out and catch bullpens. You can do, you know, take extra hitting, but the game speeds up so much. During a game, I mean, it's it's completely night and day, and that's why it's it's very important for you as that backup catcher to sit with your starting guys, go over sequences, how they would go about a certain hitter, and you may never catch a guy the entire year. Most likely, you will at some point, but the more of a same page you can be on with that pitcher, it's going to make everything run so much smoother. One ball and one strike to Aaron Harang. Murph, I know you've talked to Cameron about that, about the, you know, getting himself set for each start that he has. Yeah, you know, it was so interesting, Tom, because I, I did. I was talking to him just uh, in passing about, you know, being able to stay sharp, uh, what you guys are just talking about right now. And, you know, he immediately, and this play by Vance Worley, and we'll come back with there. He immediately tar started talking about how he stays sharp defensively. He said that's what he, w w during his off days, what he's really doing. He's back in the cage. He's getting, uh, you know, balls bounced up to him. He's, he's working on uh, moving around behind the plate. And, um, as you said, talking to the different pitchers, trying to get inside their heads so that when he does get an opportunity, you know, that he's sharp defensively. He, he, he didn't even bring up offense. He said, you know, your swing, it is what it is. You, you take your BP, you go out and work on that. But as Ben, as you just mentioned, you really got to be in the game to, uh, and have regular at bats to, to, to be really sharp uh, offensively. But from a catcher standpoint, and Ben, I don't know if you did this, but he said he really works on his defensive game in between his starts. Yeah, you have to. I mean, the one thing you really have to do, like he said, is block some balls because when you make a living with your legs, you got to make sure you're stretched out. That you can so when you go down to block the ball in that game, you don't blow groin out or, or hamstring or you just have to, you have to catch bullpens. You just have to because 
thing. You might be okay. If you're only playing once a week, you might be okay or twice a week. You might be okay for six innings, but those last three innings might be a grind if you're not in shape. One ball, one strike to Ben Revere. And Revere is down in the count one and two. That one is slapped foul on the third baseline. Mentioned that Vance Worley and Ben Revere were traded for each other. Worley and Trevor May both went to the Minnesota Twins in the deal that brought Ben Revere to the Phillies. See, that's the pitch that we saw so often in 2011 that was so good for Vance Worley. It's very effective. His comeback, a lot of guys are doing it. It's a good pitch. That's a good pitch. See why he reacted the way he did. And a line drive base hit into center field. Well, that's going to cause Worley to be even more upset. Because he felt like he had Revere struck out. The second phase of the Phillies' fantastic auction is still alive at Phillies.com. It will close out at 3 p.m. today. Some of the items that will close out include a trip for two to see the Phillies play the Brewers in Milwaukee. Dinner for eight with Mike Schmidt in the Phillies' executive dining room. He might even bring some ice cream with him. Set of jerseys individually signed by Phillies Hall of Fame players. You can check out Phillies.com right now and see which items are still up for bid. Galvez takes outside. It's 1 0. You know, I'm not a big fan of the, the two out bunt attempt. You know, Benavir has, to his credit, he's hit a few more doubles this year. That's something he said he'd like to do. Put yourself in scoring position. He runs. Stewart, almost like a pitch out, is able to release that one and throw Revere out. And the Phillies are retired here in the second. We're talking about how good they are in the base paths. Well, their catchers, Cervelli and Stewart, are also very good. His answer to be question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information. Please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Ben, here we go. Which former Phillies player did Clint Hurdle replace as Pirates manager? Which former Phillies player did Clint Hurdle replace as Pirates manager? Answer will be revealed a little later on. What do you think? Did you have an idea on that one? I think I might. Vance Worley leads it off. Worley hitting 200. It takes a strike. It's 0 1. One ball, one strike. Worley is a 133 career hitter. And he's down in the count. One ball, two strikes. While he's up there, would you like to see the designated hitter 
in the no. National League? No. No? Nope. Purist. Yeah, I want to see the I want to see the pitcher hit. I want to see him be, try to be able to bunt. I'm all for jobs, and if there's a designated hitter, somebody else that's a hitter has a job. Yeah. Because the pitcher's already going to have a job. But no, I I I like the fact that the pitcher hits. Even though he goes down on strikes a lot like that. One out here in the third. How about you? I was so against it for all these years, but I kind of would like to see it now. I, if, unless you're Mike Leak in Cincinnati, who's a very, very good hitter, right. you know, it's just I, I could have cared less if I saw Vance Rowley just hit. <laughs> That's the way I'm looking at it. <laughs> you know, I just, I mean, who would I? If I'm going to the ballpark, do I want to see Vance Worley hit or do I want to see Edgar Martinez? You talking Edgar Martinez now or Edgar Martinez when he played? Edgar Martinez when he played. Yeah, I think that's what that, that is something that a lot of people do talk about. They'd rather see David Ortiz uh, than they would rather see Aaron Horan or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot of these fans, and you could ask a lot of them. Do you want to come to the ballpark to see a three run homer? Or do you want to see a team win one nothing? You know, I would say almost to a man, they would say, I want to see that three run homer. You know, you're not going to get that if the pitcher's in there hitting. So I play with some great DHs, and, and that's why I'm looking at it. I got Frank Thomas in Chicago and Edgar Martinez. These guys are worth the price of admission. So from that aspect, I would like to see. I do think that there's, to me anyway, there's more strategy involved. When a pitcher hits, and it could be later on in the game, whether it be double switches, whether it be looking to see who's on the bench to pinch hit in a certain spot. Because that one is dribbled foul, it's 0 and 2. Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. You know, whereas if there is a designated hitter, a lot of times, hey, you can leave the starter out there for an extra inning or two because he's not going to bat. I mean, you know, nationally, sometimes you're you're fighting to get into that team's bullpen a little sooner. 0 oh, 2 pitch to Harrison. Inside 1 and 2. But I'm also looking at it. Say Cole Hamill's out there. Aaron Brang today. And he gets. You know in the 6th inning. And his pitch count gets up. And you want him to go out and. Harrison lines a single into center field. You want, you want to see him go out there. And go deeper in that ball game. But right. you can't. Because his spot's coming up. And all of a sudden Cole Hamill's. Has to come out of the lineup. Harrison is now two for two in this ball game. All right, now with all that said, I don't think it's ever going to change. There are some people that I've talked to that feel like it is going to change. I mean, do you think it will ever change? I think it absolutely will. Yes. And, and I, wonder, I think it's going to be sooner than later. Oh, really? See, I wonder too because offense is down around baseball. If if it is going to change, if you know it's down in the American League too, but it's certainly down in the National League. If it does happen, like you said, sooner rather than later. No balls in one strike. Way upstairs, one and one. Very rarely will you see Aaron Rank miss that bad <laughs> with the fastball. And that was well wide and high. Harrison hasn't taken off, but he looks like he's going to run every pitch. He's got that sort of aggressive uh, stance to him. There he goes. Pitch is taken inside. The throw by Rupp is right on the money. Yeah. That wasn't even close. <laughs> Two six on the put out. No runs, one hit, nobody left for the Pirates. Cameron Rupp showing off a strong arm. Great reactions, pretty quick release. And he knew it as soon as he let it go. He was headed back to the dugout before Galva supplied the tag.
now or visit jefferson.edu. And buy Chevrolet. Visit your local Chevy dealer or chevydealer.com. Bottom of the third. Beautiful day here at Citizens Bank Park. Pretty nice crowd for this business person special. Freddie Galvis will lead it off. Galvis singled and scored his first time up. He was up when Ben Revere was caught stealing to finish up the bottom of the second. Galvis is average at 342. That's tops among shortstops. And who would have thought? Already with 40 hits. I didn't. I'll be the first to tell you. Couldn't be happier for him. I think a lot of people thought, well, weren't sure if he would hit, let's say, 230, 240. They said, well, as long as he can pick it at shortstop, that would be fine. Well, the fact that he's probably 100 points higher than what everybody anticipated. I may be off by 10 points here or there, but who knows if it stays this way, but it's been very refreshing. As the coaching staff has told us, they've given, and this is very true, they've given a lot of guys a lot of opportunities to prove themselves. And as Ryan Sandberg has said, Freddie Galvis has grabbed that opportunity and has just run with it. To the right side. And can he beat? Yes, he can. Alvarez took a step to his right and then couldn't recover and Worley was slow to get over to cover and that's going to be an infield hit for Freddie Galvis his second hit of the day. When you're going good you're going good. This is a thing of beauty here. He just rolls a sinker over to the right side and caught Alvarez and Worley in between there. We've seen a lot of first basemen doing this before, but this is sort of the inexperience of Alvarez playing first. Yeah, it is, but you know, it really, he's got to get over there too. He's got to get over there, but yeah. Alvarez should have known right off the bat. It's not my ball. I'm going to bust it back to first base. Utley fly to center his first time up. He takes a pitch low. One and zero. Getting back to Galvis for a quick second. We. Talked with Ryan Sandberg and Ruben Romero about the upcoming season in spring training, and you could tell that Ryan Sandberg wanted to put Freddie Galvis in that two hole. You could just, you know, he gave you that feeling that if he does it, he's going to be there. Yeah, he liked the fact that he could bunt, but he also liked the fact that he was a switch hitter, so he thought that was huge uh, in a sea of left handed batters. Yes, he's a switch hitter. But he's a right hand hitter when he's batting right hand that can hit behind the runner. He can hit that hole. He showed that he can do that. Another fly ball to center field. It's not deep. Playable for Marte. Utley has flied out twice to center. So one away. And Ryan Howard's coming up. Comcast fanatic about reading night. Will be Friday, May 29th, when the Phillies take on the Colorado Rockies. A free fanatic children's book to fans 14 and under. Order your tickets now by going to Phillies.com and you can check out the reading program that the fanatic does each and every year. Fanatic was at uh, Weather Appreciation Day today. Yes, he was. I don't know if he was around when they uh, when they made the cloud. One ball and one strike to Howard. Fnac is a, a big fan of good weather. You know, they have great weather in the Galapagos Islands. This would be quite cold for the Galapagos Islands. One ball and one strike. Howard singled his first time up. And out of play off the left side in 22. Boy, Matt, our camera operator, our handheld. He's moving. He was just behind home plate. Look where he is now. Got to be in shape to hold that camera. Howard 
fouls it back to stay alive and it remains one ball two strikes. Toyota Major League scoreboard they started at 12 10 Eastern time or Central time I should say. So they started at the same time we did the Tigers are shutting out the twins three nothing. Well, the twins have had a good start to the season. Runner goes, pitches low. Stewart's throw is on the shortstop side, and Galvis swipes second base. His third stolen base of the season. And it's two and two. Tough pitch to throw in here for Stewart. You have to stay back on that ball. Very quick release. He just yanks it to the wrong side of the bat. All right, so now you talked about the alignment last time when Howard picked up the hit. Mm -hmm. This time. It, it allows Walker to go into shallow right field. He was up on the infield dirt when Galvis was at first. So now he's back in that prime spot where Howard would not have gotten a hit last time. Exactly. It doesn't matter here. Big sit to right field. Galvis throws for a moment. He'll be held at third. Strong throw by Polanco. And Ryan, Ryan Howard's thinking he's been robbed of an RBI twice. Can't buy an RBI right now. Tries that front door sinker that you're talking about earlier, Tom. And I'll tell you what, Ryan Howard had some very good swings out of bat. Now Vance really did elevate a few pitches, a couple fastballs, but he was able to get to that one, put a good swing on it. Hugh McCann chatting with Hernandez here with runners on first and third. All right, so the Phillies capitalized on the mistake in the first inning. Let's see if they can capitalize here. Nice easy swing there by the big piece. And Freddie is, you know, it, it is a tough read because you don't know how deep the second baseman is playing in shallow right field. So these are swings, and this is the first pitch. It's 0 1. I don't know what that meeting could have been about. Well, they went over signs at length yesterday. Yeah, but Ryan Howard's not going to be stealing here. Not going to be talking to the hitter. Hey, be alert for a squeeze. No, you're not going to forewarn him. Time up. Hopped him up. Left side of the infield. Mercer says he has it. Harrison comes in and calls him off. And there are two outs. So it'll be left to Grady Sizemore, who is one for one and ten for his last 25. There's a missed opportunity by Caesar you know, to score a runner with less than two outs. Hopefully, Grady can pick him up. The part that really stinks about that with Caesar is a 3 1 count. You know, you're looking for a piss you can do some damage with, and you end up jamming yourself almost. Yeah. Sizemore swung at the first pitch fastball his first time up and drove it a run. He now has five RBIs. Over his last 25 at bats. That was his first hit against Worley. And he lines that one on one hop at Mercer and he knocks it down. The throw to second is not in time. A run scores and the Phillies lead it 3 0. 
So they're going to give an error to the shortstop. Jordy Mercer. So two errors in this game. Plus an error. That wasn't put on the board as an E to start this inning. And the Phillies have a three nothing lead. Clint Hurdle's debating on whether he wants to review this. Well the clubhouse attendants going to be very happy. But Brian Howard needs to get down there. And get down big fella. It looked like he did get there ahead of the throw. But he's not moving all that quick today. Because that would have negated the run. So the runners on first and second. Here's another look at it. Now I was always under always taught. He definitely beats it. I was always taught if, if you think you could possibly slide then slide. I think it would help him too if he would slide just because he's yeah. Less pressure on your joints there. Herrera takes a strike it's 0 and 1. I will say Tom I was a very very good slider. I could slide both cheeks both sides of the bag pop up slide whatever. You know it, it would rain you know. That would say, why don't you go out in the backyard and practice? Put an old pair of sweatpants on and, and go slide. <laughs> a little foreshadowing. But I tell you, you know what helped? You know, if I had to break up a double play on either side of the bag, I could know how to do it. I could go, like I said, either either side, I could slide. Ambidextrous slider. <laughs> A double hit it to his first double play of the year his last time. He chops this one to the right side. To his left is Walker. And the inning is over. Philly settle for one. It's an unearned run. Charged to the line of Vance Worthy. So he's allowed three runs, two unearned, but the Phillies have a three nothing. Low prices on kitchen disposables, consumables, small wares, and so much more from your new restaurant partner, Who But WB Mason. So the kids from Weather Appreciation Day throwing the towels. Nearly 7,000. Actually, I think the final number was a little more than 7,000 that were on hand today. Folks at NBC 10 and also Telemundo did a great job keeping them entertained. Neil Walker swings at the first pitch. Left center field. Revere and Odubel Herrera. And it's Herrera. Puts it away. One pitch one away here in the fourth. Always a thing of beauty. I think it has more weight on it too because of the, the 27 pitch first inning that he had. The fact that he's able to get one out here in the fourth and his pitch count is at 54. 
at the knees 0 and 1. What did help though after that first inning 27 pitch was the long bottom of the first. And the Phillies were at bat for a long time. Got a couple runs. Liner to center field a base hit for Marte. This guy he's two for two. Two for two and he's four for twelve in the series. So after Walker fly to center. And Marte single that will bring Pedro Alvarez to the plate. Goes the pitch is swung on and foul tip the throw to second is in time. That's what they call a strikeout throw out double play. Second time today, Rupp has thrown out a base runner trying to steal, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, and nobody left. Boy, he does have a strong arm, and he is showing it off here this afternoon. Quick release, and Freddie Galvis had it in plenty of time to tag out Starling Marte. Phillies up three nothing. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. First, hurry in today. Toyota, let's go places. And buy McDonald's. Any size hot or iced coffee is just $1. McDonald's. Ah, I'm loving it. Well, back when the Angels hosted the All Star game, Charlie Manuel was the manager. Each and every team had a figure like Mickey Mouse that was out in Anaheim. And the Phillies were able to bring that statue back here to Citizens Bank Park. And it's here along the concourse. Get your photo taken with it if you choose. Aaron Harang a six pitch fourth inning and now we'll go to the bottom of the fourth and Cameron Rupp Harang and Ben Revere will be the hitters against Vance Worley. That one's off the end of the bat a floater to center. The lead off single for Rupp. He deserved that one Tom. Two rockets to second base. Two for two and throwing runners out. Yeah he deserved that. Tell you what. Those two throws 
I'm very impressed with the two throws that he has made to second base today. So Harang bunts and gets Rupp up to second base. Sacrifice is successful. And one four on the put out. He reached out an error and scored his first time up and then singled his last time. He's throwing out trying to steal. Well, Aaron Harang has done his job here this afternoon at the plate and on the mound. He really deadened that bunt very well. Soft hands. Side two and up. It's been third at bat in the fourth inning. Well, the one thing that we've noticed from Worley, I think we saw this during spring training, his fastball doesn't have the same life on it that it had when he pitched for the Phillies. Would you agree with that, Ben? Yes. I mean, he was in the low 90s when he was pitching for the Phillies, and he's pretty much in the high 80s here today. A bit outside. And that was a fastball, so it's three and oh. Freddy Galvis, who's two for two with a couple runs scored on deck. Cameron Rupp takes his lead off second base. And that's strike two, a cutter, and it's three balls and two strikes. Been kind of an odd year for Worley as far as matchups go. So he's made six starts. This is number seven. Fly ball left field. It's not deep. And Harrison will put it away. He's faced the Brewers twice, back to back games, the Cubs twice, back to back games, and the Cardinals twice in back to back games. Talk about deja vu. It's funny how that rotation turns itself over and you find yourself against the same opponent. There's Galvis, who is two for two, as we mentioned. Came in hitting fifth in the National League and hitting. Now he's up to third with his two hits today. D. Gordon, Adrian Gonzalez, the only two who have better batting averages. Away, 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 away. In this at bat. Freddie last night was able to lay off those pitches by Liriano, knowing they were probably pitching around him. Ground ball off the bag, and it's bouncing right to Alvarez, and Galvis will beat it to the first base bag. Another base hit. Boy, that old saying of when you're hot, you're hot. Hey, this is ridiculous what's going on with Freddie Galvis. Yeah, but I'm upset to hit the bag. That's a double and an RBI, and the Phillies well, take a 4 0 lead. That is true. You know, this ball gets down the line in a hurry. Alvarez not getting that, that ball. And a very favorable bounce. And we know the throwing problems that he has. Cameron Rupp takes a big turn around third base. And Alvarez said, oh, I might give it a shot. Well, speaking of Freddie Galvis, uh, 
on his improved hitting. It's our Geico quote of the day. They went to me and they told me we want you to hit the ball on the ground line drives and grounders. And that's what we wanted to do. I'm getting my foot down early and that's allowing me to see it better and hit it on the grounds. Well he's three for three putting the ball in play. It's a seven three hit game of the year. His average up to three fifty three as Utley takes low. And you know what Ben you're right. Ball hit the first base bag otherwise that was going down the line. Yeah. I mean, I heard it hit something. I can only imagine it hit the ground and not his foot. But I think he would have taken his bag. It's almost like he turned around to Dale Scott and said, Oh, by the way, did you know that hit me? <laughs> From here, it sounded like it, we heard a, a two distinct sounds. Yeah, you can review that if you're the manager. Two balls and two strikes to chase. Good two out knock here. Pulls that one and it's knocked down by Alvarez and the side is retired. No runs, two hits, and two men left. We'll go to the fifth inning of the Phillies enjoying a 3 0 lead. All right, Ben, here we go. Which former Phillies player did Clint Hurdle replace as a Pirates manager? My knee jerk reaction was, you know, we'd like to keep it between the teams. Yeah. Pete, Mc Pete McCannon. Pete McCannon would have been a good guess. He did play for the Phillies, did correct. manage the Pirates, but. I'm going to go with John Russell. John Russell is correct. JR was the manager of the Pirates 2008, 2009, 2010. Currently the bench coach for Buck Showalter in the Orioles. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of Phillies prize pack. Off 
the end of the bat. It's one ball and two strikes to Jung Ho Gung. He grounded out to third his first time up. Oh. And he's hit by a pitch. And that'll put the leadoff batter aboard for the first time today for the Pirates. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Well, as you mentioned, uh, kind of a special day down here at the ballpark, NBC 10 Weather Education Day here at Citizens Bank Park, presented by Citizens Bank and uh, the Phillies. You see the NBC 10 weather team and some folks from Telemundo as well. We're all here. About uh, 7,000 plus kids from around the area got a chance to learn all about uh, weather and then how it all happens and the interesting things that go along with that. We have the full force out here uh, at Citizens Bank Park. Is that one is the fly out to right field? And, you know, they even performed some experiments. They got some of the players out there as well. And uh, if you just judged it by the noise, guys, oh, I know you heard it. <laughs> Those kids were having a great time. I, I think the players who went out there also enjoyed themselves. They told some stories about playing some games in some really crazy weather. And then they even made some clouds at the end of the day. So <laughs> just a great day. A first time ever here at Citizen Bank Park. But uh, I think judging on uh, what we saw today was a success. Wouldn't be surprised if that uh, happens every year. I'll tell you what, the overhead shot. Uh, with the with the chopper uh, that we saw with the the amount of kids that were all loaded up on the first base side that was an incredible yep. shot Ben and I we went out uh, to the dugout look at the shot right I mean this is incredible right here that's Sky Force 10 Tom. that's Sky Force 10 yes I mean that's amazing for Stewart's the batter check swing and he did go and it's one and one Texas Rangers also uh, had a weather day today. So it does happen around baseball. First time the Phillies have done it. And as Murph said, it's probably not going to be the last. I mean, see all the kids that are sitting up uh, in the upper deck watching today's ball game. What the heck, you get to be out of school for a day and a yeah. gorgeous afternoon like this. I love good weather, but I also like being out of school, <laughs> especially on a what a beautiful day. One two pitch to Stewart and it's it back toward the middle and it's backhanded by Utley flips to second for one over to first not in time. What a force play at second base and there are two outs. Four six on the put out. And a lot. That was pretty incredible start. The reaction from the fans too. Well, the fans can definitely appreciate this. We see Chase do this from time to time, either knock balls down out in the outfield, but he gets to this one, slides a great flip. I don't even know how Freddie got that off. I don't even know how Chase flipped it as look at this flip. But the thing is he didn't let his momentum carry him where he was going to throw it wide of Freddie. Some field awareness right there. Steve Lombardozzi is going to pitch it for Worley. His day is done, and he's late through the strike zone on the first pitch from Morang. Vance did nibble a lot today, but it wasn't all his fault. His defense kind of hurt him behind him. Fastball inside, one ball, one strike to Lombardozzi. It's Lee's out in the bullpen. There, two and one. Nice camera. Fresh fade there, Tom, huh? Yeah, he's a little frustrated with the uh, way he pitched today. Or the way things went today in his return to Philadelphia. Balls, two strikes. And that one is hit foul. And a 
and a call strike three Two Seaver came back over the inside part of the plate. That's five strikeouts for Aaron Harang helped out by a little defense from Chase Utley at second base. This ball goes through the inning was a little different but instead Utley gets to it and a little backwards flip to help the Phils get through the fifth. You get the Citizens Bank Park concert package. You can bid on that. Plus a catered barbecue party at your home hosted by Greg the Bull Lazinski. Plus you can play video games at Fanavision at Citizens Bank Park with Ben Revere. In partnership with 94 WIP and 1210 WPHT Radio. The fantastic auction benefits Phillies charities. Go to phillies.com to see what's left. Last year it was A.J. Burnett that you got a chance to play video games with on the big video board here. Radamus Liz is the new pitcher. Former teammate of Ben Davis. Eighth ball game, one and two, 3.27 ERA. Back when he threw a hundred. I don't think he has that in the tank anymore. And a high fly ball deep to right field. Polanco going back. It is gone. Home run, Ryan Howard. It's his third hit of the day, seventh home run of the season. And the Phillies now lead it 4 0. The hitter will let you know. That pitch there at 91. And it wasn't in, in, but it was in far enough. He pulls his hands in. And yeah, got it. Well, that makes a winner of Michael Hipser Stowe. He's won $300 thanks to Ryan Howard in the McDonald's home run jackpot. Here's Hernandez who hits one to shortstop. Mercer throws to first just in time. Boy, that was a really close play. Ryan Sandberg is going to come out. Boy, Hernandez is flying down the line. Flying. Gets out of the box very well. Little double clutch by Mercer. Just for a second, but yeah, he got him. And Ryan Sandberg heads back down the stairs. They decide not to review it. Alvarez better get his foot off the bag. He's going to get some nails through yeah, his he heel was, there. Yeah, he was pretty. Uh, he was pretty thick with that that foot. Sizemore is one for two. He singled home run his first time up. Takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. What do you remember about Liz? I remember him having a, a triple digit fastball, but he loved his changeup. To the right side. Walker stays down on it. Absolutely loved his changeup. 
Hit a decent little breaking ball, nothing great, but if I have an arm like that, I want to use it. You can see with his velocity that he's not coming close to that, but Ryan Howard seemed to like it. Well, they went up there hunting for a first pitch. Now these guys, the Phillies saw these guys a lot in spring training. Pitches outside, one ball, no strikes. And Herrera rips one to right field. Polanco on the run, he won't get to it. He'll take it on a hop. Herrera's trying for two. The throw to second base, not in time. Seventh double of the year for Odubel Herrera. Make him feel better. It's a pitch here and really brings his hands inside. Well, Polanco is going to have a chance at that. That ball actually stayed in the air a lot longer than I thought. I thought he was going to have a chance. Hey, Tom, you and I passed him in the in the clubhouse today. And not very tall, but he's put together. I mean, he's, he's a strong little dude. Well, they're going to walk her up intentionally, and that'll bring Aaron Harang to the plate. So the Phillies with a 4 0 lead. Off to a, a good start here today, and Harang will get a chance to bat. Then, while we have a moment, I don't know if you've looked at the uh, list of birthdays today. George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, celebrating a birthday today. I don't know if you sent him a card or an email or anything like that. Send him a fax. Mark Zuckerberg is 31 years old. He's only 31 today. Now, those list of names that are celebrating birthdays today, they pale in the status of uh, our own Isaac Bennett, who is celebrating a birthday today down at the production cavity. We didn't know that we would have we would have got some ice cream for him, maybe yes. a cupcake from Frank in the lunchroom. But Isaac, happy birthday! We hope you're having a great day. You might remember Isaac, uh, who delivered his own, delivered his uh, his wife's. He and his wife had a baby last year. He delivered the baby. That's awesome. But he's also delivered calves and other uh, species. But congratulations, Isaac! You've made it another year. Aaron Harang a sack bunt his last time up. Celebrating a birthday with Tony Perez from Phil and Ben who else's birthday is it today the good doctor. Roy Halliday. I was going to say Isaac did not get his doctorate for delivering the baby. <laughs> but yes uh, doc is celebrating a birthday today. It's a foul. It's two balls and one strike. Funny we bring that up as number 34 is in the batter's box right now. Which stocks number. Go outside three and one harangue. Every time I think about Doc, I think about all the games that he pitched, how great he was, and how uh, how lucky we were to see him in a Phillies uniform, even for the time that he was here. Perfect game, no hitter. He was one of those guys that when he went out there, it didn't matter. You thought the Phillies were going to get a win today. I mean, there was a period of time for a couple of years where he was just lights out. Not only win, but a no hitter. Yeah. 3 2 pitch runners go. A swing and a miss, and Harang is struck out. Side is retired. The Phillies do add another one, though. Ryan Howard, his seventh home run of the season, as he smokes this one into the seats. We mentioned jokingly that he felt like he might have been robbed of a couple RBIs earlier. Well, he wasn't going to take any chances with this one.
has stepped out of the bullpen and has delivered time and time again with the best save percentage in team history. His first save as a Philly came against Pittsburgh in April of 2012. The record setting save once again left the Pirates on the short ends. Papelbon has slammed the door on a major milestone in Philadelphia. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, as we go to the sixth inning, Jonathan Papelbon heading to the bullpen and getting himself prepared in case the Phillies need him to close out today's game. It was a great moment last night. You kind of picture, all right, well, this moment's going to be like this or this moment's going to be like this. You know, it's so hard to script them. And yesterday, I don't know if you could have scripted it to be any more exciting than the way that game finished up. No way. No way. First pitch, uh, Gregory Polanco is hit to shortstop, and Galvis lost his grip on it. And that'll probably be his fifth error of the year. And they do score it an error. It's just an unlucky play right there. He had it. He may have been rushing a little bit because Polanco was moving pretty good. See, Freddie not very happy with that play there, but he just kind of gets it and the ball slips out of his hand. Right there, he's got it clean and whoop. And he did the right thing. He didn't flip the, the ball from his glove to his hand. He transferred it, went in and grabbed the ball. It just slipped out of his hand. Harrison takes a strike. It's 0 1. You know, you see here, you get the, you see the exchange, and he goes in and gets the ball. It just doesn't get all of it. And they always taught us that. And I knew that when I double clutched or did that as a catcher, I would flip the ball from my glove to my hand. Popped up. Howard says he has it. One out here at the top of the sixth inning. You physically have to reach in there and grab it. You know, at times I would get away with it because I, you know, big I hands. some big hands. Yeah. But here's Neil Walker. He's 0 for 2. Aaron Harang's earned run average here at home started out under one, and it's going to keep on going down the way he's throwing today. Earn run average is down to 2.13. Started out the day at 2.38. And he misses low, 3 0. Marte on deck. First, Howard's got it. Throws to second for one. Back over to first in time at 363 double play. Boy, everything was clean on that one. No runs, no hits, nobody left. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Phillies shutting out the Pirates.
ultimate provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. And buy your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com today. Along with Ben Davis and Greg Murphy, I'm Tom McCarthy. We're here in Philadelphia where the Phillies lead the, the Pirates 4-0. Gorgeous afternoon for baseball. The Phillies have 10 hits. They've left eight. But they did some damage against Vance Worley. Who surrendered three runs, one earned, and now Liz in his second inning of relief. Faces the top of the order, Revere Galvis and Chase Utley. One ball, one strike to Revere. A little dribble foul, it's one and two. Rush that one up there. Ninety eight. Did you play with it with the Orioles? Yes. Triple A. 2009, I believe it was. That was before the transition to the mound. Yes. <laughs> Towards shortstop to his left is Mercer. And he throws out Revere one away here in the sixth. Well, it's time now for our timeless moment brought to you by Coors Banquets. And today's timeless moment on this date, 1983. The Phillies earned their first win in franchise history, defeating the defending champion Chicago White Stockings 12 to 1 at Lakefront Park. Was it cold that day, Tom? I don't think it was. I think it was it was comfortable. Lakefront Park uh, was also known as White Stocking Park. It began as the home of the White Stockings in 1871. So that balls hit foul. No balls in one strike. And Fred is going to need a new one. You actually would have done pretty well at, uh, at that ballpark. Because the fence in right field was only 200 feet from home plate. <laughs> That's little league distance. Yeah. So any, anyone hitting the ball over the fence was awarded a ground rule double. <laughs> they they really played with the rules back in the, the 1880s. I would have hit balls way out of there. And you would still had a, a ground rule double. <laughs> you would have racked up the dug, doubles. Outside and Galvis walks, so he's been on base four times today. That'll bring Utley to the plate for the fourth time. Utley's 0 for 3. He's fly to center twice. He's grounded out to first. Does have a stolen base today.
upstairs 1 and 0 to Utley. Chase came into this ball game with four hits and 19 at bats on the homestand so he's 0 for 3 today so his numbers have dipped again. He's four for his last 22. Of Major League Scoreboard, the Cubs beat the Mets last night. Today, the Mets lead the Cubs 1-0 on an Anthony Wrecker home run. Jonathan Nice on the mound for the Mets in that ball game. The Mets can feel the Nationals right on their heels. The Nationals just a game and a half out. The Nationals are a game and a half out. Marlins are four and a half out. Are five out, and the Phillies eight and a half out. Was it a matter of time before the Nats just started winning? Was it? Yeah, I think it was, just because of their pitching staff. Now, are they going to be atop the division shortly? Uh, who knows? Uh, they're somewhat inconsistent offensively, but the pitching staff. I mean, tonight Doug Fister starts. I mean, he's their number five starter. He is. He could be a, a two or a three on, a, on every other team. Two balls and two strikes to Utley. And Chase takes low three and two. Nice crisp line drive up the middle here. Butter goes, pitches chopped towards seconds. They flip to second for one. Ooh, they had a chance to get the double play, and they did get the double play. Mercer almost gave up on it, thinking that Utley would be safe easily. After double clutching, he makes the throw, and the Phillies are retired here in the sixth. We'll go to the seventh. The Phillies up four. Time now for your Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summary. The Phillies lead it 4-0. They jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the first against Vance Worley. Freddie Galvis has three hits today. Ryan Howard has three hits, including a seventh home run. So as we go to the seventh inning, Aaron Harang has a four-run cushion to work with. 
Now the first pitch is over for strike to Starling Marte. He's a two for two. He's doubled and he's singled. Now time is called. Dale Scott has a word or two with Starling Marte. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 and 2. Fastball in. He fouls it at the plate. Pirates will leave for Chicago after this ball game. The Phillies will await the arrival of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Depending on what their schedule was, the D-backs could already be in town. They may have waited until today to travel because they had an off day. That happens a lot around baseball. Got him. He went after a pitch in the dirt. Ruff is able to block it, and then the strikeout is completed. That's six strikeouts for Haran. And one away. These lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They were interested to see a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal, and that's helping you bank better. Pedro Alvarez 0 for 2. He's lined out and he is struck out. Outside and high 1 and 0. Conversation between Rupp and Harang. 90 pitches for Aaron. He's averaging 97 per outing uh, this year. And to say that he's at 90 at this point, considering he threw 27 in the first inning, 14 foul balls in the first inning by the Pirates. He's at a pretty good spot. And now 3 0. We didn't know how long he'd last. I mean, that was a, a long first inning. And he just walked Alvarez on four pitches. And that is his first walk of the afternoon. He's also hit about it. And here comes Jung Ho Gung. Somebody's going to get up. Thinking Garcia. Deacon. See who's coming up here. At the bottom of the order, Mercer and Stewart, then yeah. the pinch hitter. That one drops in. It's 0 1. Maybe Defreitas. Justin's throwing the ball very well. Looks like it is going to be Deacon. Over to third. This should be two. There's one. Great feed from Hernandez to Utley. And around the horn, 5 4 3 double play. It's the second straight inning. The Phillies have turned to double play to help Harang's cause. Pretty smooth all the way around. It's time to stretch in Philadelphia with the Phillies up 4 0.
All right, Michael, we appreciate it as Ryan Howard leads things off in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's 4 nothing. Phillies on top. Try to even up this series. They've played two excellent games between last night and today. And Howard hits a foul. Howard with his second three hit game of the year. He has two singles and a home run. It's the 73rd of his career. And his numbers are rising. His average at 232. With seven home runs, 16 runs batted in. He goes after a high fastball. It's one and two. Very rarely would you get a second at bat against a reliever in a ball game. I was thinking about that, that he's still hanging out there. Breaking ball, and it's two and two. I can't believe Freddie has seven three hit games already this year. It's May 14th. He's basically been among the leaders. He's been one or two in that category the entire season. As you would imagine. Howard's home run today was number 341 for his career. And now the 2 2 pitch to him. Swing and a miss. Threw him a 98 mile an hour fastball, one away here in the seventh. WB Mason is this season's breakout facilities maintenance player, specializing in all of your cleaning needs. WB Mason also provides a full selection of 3M safety products that can't be struck out. Who but WB Mason? Cesar's 0 for 2. He's grounded out and flied out. First pitch is up high, 1 0. Had an error on my scorecard time to get out the old whiteout. Yeah, how you doing with the scoring, by the way? Doing okay. Yeah. Very neat. Two and one. You've chosen green as your primary color. My favorite color. Okay. You, on the other hand, have a cornucopia of colors. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Cesar Hernandez. And this happens a lot. Ooh, look at his finger. Cesar chops it to second. And it's 4 3 of the put out, two away here in the seventh inning. Well, as time is winding down for the Phillies' fantastic auction. In fact, you have uh, until tonight to bid on these particular items. 9 p.m. tonight, a round of golf for three with Mike Schmidt. Private on-field dinner for 10 at Citizens Bank Park. A complete set of the 2014-15 Philly Fanatic Bobblehead of the Month series. In partnership with 94 WIP and 1210 WPHD. Go to phillies.com for more information on the Phillies' fantastic auction. And what is left? Brady Sizemore is standing on first. That's not reviewable because it never got to the outfield grass. CB Buckner signaled foul. It did look like it went over the bag. But you cannot review that because it wasn't a line drive to the outfield grass. And I don't understand it. How is it not reviewable? It's a fair ball. That's a fair ball. How is that not reviewable? I know the rules are the rules, but. Boy, that is a fair ball right over the corner of the bag. It looked like it laid right on top of the bag. But that's so easy to see. Well, I know. That's, that's what I'm, I mean. It's surprising that C.B. Buckner didn't see it from where he was. I mean, he's closer than any of us, and we thought it was fair from up here. But if you did review it, you could plainly see that it was fair. I would agree with you on, on that one. I do agree with that. I don't know, though, on some others. Oh, man. They said that Sizemore went around. This is pretty clear. So CB moves. Yeah, it's a fair ball. It's right over the bag.
Now I will admit that ball was hooking pretty good, but it was right over the back. Nice grab by that gentleman right there. I, I think an umpire should stand his ground and, and watch it. You can always hurdle the ball. And a call strike three. Sizemore is retired, and you do not see Grady Sizemore show emotion. And he is pretty upset. He was robbed of another base hit. Phillies go down in order, and we'll head to the eighth inning. Right. By the Pennsylvania Lottery benefits all the Pennsylvanians and by Nissan choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever shop Nissan.com Go to the top of the eighth inning the Phillies on top four nothing over the Pirates Jordy Mercer will lead it off against Aaron Harang and you see the pitch type or the pitches that he's used today only one curveball today Ben but he's used 20 sliders and there's a fastball for Seamer. And it's 0 and 1. If it's working for you, you're going to keep using it. His sinker to me seems to have a lot more life on it as well. Throws some good change ups. He's thrown a couple good change ups down and in to right handed hitters. There's a change up right there. It's 1 and 2. So he's thrown fastball, curveball, and change up the first three pitches to Jordy Mercer, who's 0 for 2. Ball two strikes. Chris Stewart's on deck. Ball right center field long run for Herrera and he gets there. One out Stewart's coming up time for the major league notebook Murph take it away. All right. Thank you very much Tom. Well things are not going well for the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, they are going to have to continue on without their shortstop Gene Segura. He is uh, headed to the DL with a fractured pinky. Uh, he did that just the other day. Uh, it's a big loss to their lineup. He's batting 265 and they haven't been scoring a whole lot of runs. They just called up uh, their shortstop from Triple A. He will fill his spot for the next uh, couple of weeks until Segura is all healed and more injury news this time for the St. Louis Cardinals and their outfielder John Jay. He's been battling that sore wrist uh, pretty much all season. He had surgery on that wrist in the offseason. He now has tendonitis in the wrist and they also think it has a, it caused a bone bruise in the thumb. Because of that they have finally decided they're going to shut him down send him to the disabled list as well. So a guy that uh, was a big part of the Phillies Cardinals series when we were in St. Louis uh, headed to the disabled list for two weeks guys. Yeah he's uh, he's been red hot. As we all know Carpenter has been red hot. The thing about the Cardinals is that they can just put Peter Borges out there 
to fill in. And they won't lack for speed. That's for sure. Two balls and two strikes to Chris Stewart. That's all I'll say about that one. Sound like Forrest Gump. That's all I'll say about that. Over to the hole, scooped up by Hernandez. Followed the Phillies all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone and tablet. Corey Hart will pinch hit with two outs here in the eighth inning. One's over at the knees. I'll tell you, Harang, you mentioned this before. He figures out what the umpire is calling, and that's part of his game plan, which he establishes as the first few innings unfold. Well, he's figured out Dale Scott today. And would you agree with that? The Absolutely. way he's calling yes. him? Yes. And I'm not saying Scott Del Scott's off or not. I think his strike zone has been very good today. It's been very consistent. Very consistent. And I'm not saying all pitchers can do this. Aaron ha Harang can do that because he has very good control. You just can't say, oh, I'm going to go out and see how much he'll give me if you don't have pinpoint control. That is going to be a fair ball. It hits the base. And Corey Hart will have a base hit. Take that ball. <laughs> Freddie Galvis had one of those earlier. All right, Sandberg trots out to the mound. He's not going to make a move here unless Harang tells him something differently. He's at 109 pitches. Look at Harang laughing. The ball hitting the bag. That's the first hit he's allowed since the fourth inning. Later tonight, Ben Revere shares how he stays relentlessly positive despite baseball's ups and downs, and why top prospect J.P. Crawford is back with a bang with an early after an early season injury. Watch Philly's Clubhouse presented by Mercedes-Benz tonight at 6:30 right here on Top Gas Sports. Now. So now Polanco is up. He's 0 for 3. Outside, one and 0. It's a liner out to right, right at Grady Sizemore, and the inning is over. Well, give a nice round of applause to Aaron Harang. Eight shutout innings here this afternoon. His day is probably done. His team has given him a 4 0 lead, and he is getting a very nice round of applause.
We're up here in the bullpen, but we thought we'd send some love out to the catchers today. Well, I do appreciate that, Tom. I really do. Chris Stewart here throwing out Ben Revere, and the catchers were very solid today. Hammer up with two missiles. I mean, these are rockets to second base. The knob, nab Josh Harrison, and then he gets Marte at second. And this really picks up Aaron Harang. And these balls are right on the mark. And that's why they are Hyundai defensive plays of the game. Brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Bobby Lafram Boys will be the new pitcher for the Pirates. He is in there for Antonio Bastardo, who's out on paternity leave and will rejoin the, uh, the uh, Pirates when they're in Chicago playing the Cubs. His numbers in AAA, a 4.73 earned run average. 14 strikeouts and 13 and a third. He'll face Odubel Herrera. Fouls the first pitch off. It's 0 and 1. We'll get an idea of what Ryan Sandberg is thinking about the next pitcher for the Phillies when there's one out. He had Deekman up earlier and then he had Giles up in the last inning. Right now the bullpen is quiet for the Phillies. Another foul ball, and it's 0 and 2 to Herrera, who's 1 for 3. Gets him with a breaking ball, one out here in the eighth inning. Liz went three innings for the Pirates. He allowed two hits and one run. He walked two and struck out three. He looked good. He looked at the first pitch homer to Ryan Howard, but he settled down after that. Well, it is Giles who will start to throw again in the pen. Rupp is one for two. Outside, one ball, no strikes. Giles does come in. That'll be his third straight game that he'll be in. That one's lined to left field. It is a fair ball going to the corner. Cameron Rupp on his way. To second base, and he's there standing, his second hit of the afternoon, his first double of the year. Well, good for him. He's had himself a good day. And Jeff Francoeur will pinch hit for Aaron Harang. Cameron Rupp's had a wonderful day for himself personally, but the way he handled Harang. Through two base runners out, which in the fourth game the Phillies have not been able to do, and make him feel good. So Harang will be done after eight innings, five hits, no runs, one walk, six strikeouts. All right, Core takes outside, one and zero. Line for Aaron Harang. Sure is. His earned run average drops to just a hair over two. There was 112 pitches today. He's getting closer to the top 10 in ERA in the National League. In the dirt, two and one to Fran Coeur. It's not in the top 10 with a 203. Last time I looked, uh, I think he was 11, but. Let me confirm that. On the outside corner, two and two.
Ground ball toward the left side. And Ruff was kind of caught in no man's land, and Francoeur is out at first base, and he's thinking he's safe. And here comes Ryan Sandberg again. Francoeur is emphatic that he was safe. Right, it looked awfully close. Tough to tell with the naked eye. I thought he had beaten it, but let's take a look. I think he got him. He's out. So they're going to review it. So Dale Scott will go over, get the headphones on. CB Buckner will meet him. What'd you think? You thought he was out too? I thought he was out. Yeah. Folks in New York are already taking a look at it, so they'll have a decision soon enough. It's really close. The ball is just arriving in his glove. His foot looks like it's on the bag. But it's one of those is it on the bag or is it just a hair above it? That may be inconclusive and they may not be able to overturn it. It may be the call stands instead of the call is confirmed. Right there is the ball in the glove and the foot's on the bag. Looks like it's all at the same time. But I think this call is going to wind up standing, and I think Frank Core is going to be retired for the second out of the inning. You're taught not to lunge at the bag, but run straight through the bag. You lose more time when you're in the air and lunging, making that long stride to the base. Hard to do though. There's the call. He is out. Oh, it was worth a shot. Now Ryan Sandberg cannot argue the replay. So he's got a few words for CB Buckner. I think he's saying that CB Buckner called him safe at first. So the call stands. It's not confirmed. It stands. That means there's not enough evidence to overturn it. The mechanics are kind of interesting over at first base because both hands move when he makes the out call. So runner at second now, two men down. And the ball at the end of the bat to Revere. It's 0 1. Oh, by the way, Harang is in the top 10 now. It's at 2.03. We'll watch it again. That was pretty emphatic out call. Yeah. One ball, one strike. And it's one ball and two strikes. Let's see where this guy be tough on lefties. I the, agree with you. The one he threw Herrera was good. It's a tough arm angle to pick the ball up. The three quarter. I wouldn't say it's sidearm, but it's three quarter. Got a big break on it. Now one ball and two strikes. Now ball foul. Two guys missed that flip into the stands. <laughs> the guy two rows behind him were, was happy about it. Yeah, but those two guys missed that flip. That's the one in the middle, right? Oh, I was I was I was doing that the whole time, letting him have it. <laughs> he get his goggles back. In the dirt, two balls, two strikes. Yeah, there's two sets of specs down on the field. It is bright out there, isn't it? Yeah, 
Yeah, that dirt's appreciative right now. It's got some shades on it. Here's the 2 2 pitch coming to Revere with a runner at second base. Good lead by Rupp. And another foul ball. Toy the Major League scoreboard, the Mets. Now lead it three to one. Two home runs by Anthony Recker. Travis Wood had only allowed two extra base hits so far this season for the Cubs. Well, he's allowed three today. A lot of catchers having some good good games today. Backup catchers. That's right. Whole day game after a night game. Guys are getting a chance to play a little bit. Mercer, the shortstop, gives way to Harrison, and the inning is over. So that sets up the top of the ninth inning. The Phils looking to split the series. Kenny Giles is coming out of the pen. On Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Well, there's a lot to talk about, including the outing put together by Aaron Harang. Eight innings, five hits, no runs. His earned run average here at Citizens Bank Park, we mentioned it was 0.84. Well, it's down to 0.61 here at Citizens Bank Park alone. Overall, 2.03. Feels very comfortable here. Well, Ken Giles will take over, try to get the last three outs. We won't see, hopefully, we'll see Papelbon today. But Papelbon was honored before the ball game today by Pat Gillick. And Jeff Francoeur was out there as well. Of course, Francoeur made the throw to help Papelbon record save number 113 last night. So they officially handed him the baseball that was authenticated after the game last night. Balls one strike to Josh Harrison. It'll be Harrison, Walker, and Marte. Good breaking ball, 0 and 2. Yeah, your call was so good on that because so many things transpired. And he makes a pitch. Tranquil runs all the way over, catches the ball, makes a great throw home. Lombardos is tagging up. Chooch with the plate, the plate. There's a lot going on in one play. Well, and you said that you had to send him if you're the Pirates. That you, there was the, you had to. Yeah. You can't always count on a two out hit. You just can't can't do it there. One ball and two strikes to Harrison. And he throws the bat at the baseball, floats it out to shallow left center, and it's going to drop for a base hit. That's three hits today for Harrison. Here's the play last night we were talking about. Lombardozzi's on third. Mercer. 
hits it toward foul territory. So Jeff has to run all the way over there. His momentum is going towards the stance. Has to catch it. Gets momentum going back towards home. Make a strong throw. And Chooch has to apply the tag. A lot of moving parts there, Tom. Well, and we talked all game about how the wind was blowing everything into the seats that was going down the right field line. Well, he's starting to loosen up. It's not a safe situation just yet. Swing and a miss, and Rupp misses the ball, and up to second base goes Harrison. And that'll be a pass ball. Every time the Phillies pitchers retire, the opposition one, two, three. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. A one pitch. Hit over to first. Ryan Howard's got it. The runner does go over to third, but there's one out. They'll exchange the outs here for the movement of the base runner. And Marte is coming up. I wouldn't say we overlook the 363 double play that Ryan Howard turned earlier in the game, but picked it and nice clean throw to second base. You know, he's had some issues in the past throwing the ball to second, but nice easy feed to, to Freddie at short. Freddie back to him. Those double plays are always huge in any ball game. The Phillies have had. Three double plays today, including the strikeout throw him out fourth inning that ended the fourth inning. No balls in one strike to Marte. And that one is whacked to deep left center field. Herrera on the run, and it is off the wall. Boy, Herrera played it perfectly. A run scores, and Marte goes to second. It's an RBI double. And it's a 4 1 ball game. Well, this is now a safe situation with Gung in the on deck circle. So Marte with his third hit today, his second double today. The hanging slider. And that ball couldn't come any closer to getting out of here. Sandberg's on his way out. Now there's the signal to the pen. So Papelbon is going to come in. Giles' this afternoon is done. The runner at second is his responsibility. So it will be a safe situation for Jonathan Papelbon. One down here at the top of the ninth inning.
We've had some deliveries here this afternoon, but it's Ryan Howard reading Liz to start the fifth. It's a first pitch heater here at 91 miles an hour. Deposits it in the right field bleachers. And that is our WB Mason delivery of the game. All right, so now the Phillies, uh, thanks to Howard home run and a couple of other timely hits, have a three run lead. And it's Jonathan Papabon will come in to try to close the door. Papabon last night picked up career save number 113 in the Phillies uniform. It was his seventh of the year. A 1.26 earned run average. And he'll face Pedro Alvarez with Marte at second base. Alvarez has struck out today. He's also lined out and walked. Walked on four pitches his last time up. Pitches swung out and missed. That pitch was listed as a fastball at 89. Marte takes off and the pitch is fouled back. He honestly could have gotten to third before that pitch was even thrown. I mean, the way the shift is. As you see, Papelbon's numbers as a Philly. The way the shift is, well, they're not paying him any mind. He's got about a 12 foot lead to start, and then just kept, keeps on growing it. And Freddie didn't even move. No. He, did, he knew he wasn't going to be. I mean, they're just giving him the base. If you think about it, his run doesn't mean a whole lot. Score that defensive indifference. Ground ball right side, a run will get home. Howard will flip it to Papelbon. 3 1 on the put out. And there are two outs. It's an RBI on a ground out for Alvarez. And Gung will be the batter. Well, Alvarez is very happy. That Marte went to third on that. He's got an RBI out of it. I guess by the book that is yeah, defensive he indifference. Yeah, he wasn't held on. There was no attempt to go cover third. Uh, sometimes I think that rule though has to be tinkered with a little bit because you know four one is. It's now four to two. It's only a two-run game. If he gets on, then that stolen base, you know, is big because he scores right. on the ground out. Then that run actually would mean something. Correct. Foul ball at 0 and 1. All right, so close the line on Giles. He's charged with two runs here today in the third of an inning, two hits. Balls at one strike. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. This crowd of 29,205 on their feet. Bills trying to even up this series and then welcome in the Arizona Diamondbacks. Papelbot is all set to go. The 0 2 pitch and it hits him square in the back. Well, that's the second time today he's been hit by a pitch. And no intent at all. And now the tying run is coming to the plate, and Andrew McCutcheon. A little pinch hit for Jordy Mercer. 
And Paps just really spins off this ball. His arm is dragging. And the ball just rides up and in. And this does not feel good. But you see Paps just really peel off. And his arm drags behind and Gung gets one right off his spine. Yeah, right at the edge of the two in 27. Well, it's not easy now with McCutcheon who's hitting 231. Yes. Has the ability to pop it out of the yard. Three home runs. He hasn't really had many opportunities as a pinch hitter during his career. First pitch is outside. It's 1 0. Francisco Cervelli is in the on deck circle. Popped him up. This should do it. Howard in foul territory. Comes down the line and makes the catch of the Phillies have won back to back ball games as they have defeated the Pirates here this afternoon 4 